so um, she lived with uh, uh, mental illness. She didn't want to die. Um, and unfortunately, um, she ended up in hospital for um, something unrelated. She had pneumonia. And um, uh, she lived in supported care. And um, I feel that she died of neglect. Um, the harsh words, um, that's my personal view, and that won't change. Um, so as a family, we go to the hospital and because um, we thought that we were doing the right thing because I am unwell, but my brother is also unwell and our mum is ageing. So we thought, okay, we would try to um, connect her with a, a guardian. And um, but the groomers were still actively involved with our sister. And um, anyway, it was presented to us that um, we should turn her ventilator off. Now, during that process, um, the, the treating team encouraged us to do that because they said that if it wasn't this time, it would just be another time. So we should like end her pain, right? So because it didn't sit comfortably with me, and it still doesn't. Um, I thought, okay, we'll ring the guardian because the guardian is meant to be the devil's advocate. But in this case, it was like, well, are you happy with the decision? And it's like, no, but because of the weight of the medical profession, it certainly outweighed any say that we had as a family. And um, I believe that when people are placed into supported care, um, they don't have access to appropriate care and the rights of everybody else. So in her particular case, she um, asked for assistance three times and at one point she even had a doctor come out, but um, it wasn't uh, assessed that she actually had pneumonia and she, that's what she died from. So um, if she had been sent to hospital earlier, would that have changed things? But in her case, like the, the person in charge of the house was like, we well, your sister wants a doctor even if she's got sore eyes. Well, isn't it up to the doctor to determine whether or not if she needs medical assistance because that person doesn't have medical training? So from, um, I feel that um, with the way that it works now is that people have um, control of people's lives that don't have qualifications, meaning that they're taking away um, registered nurses and they're replacing them with enrolled nurses and they're taking enrolled nurses away and they're replacing them with support workers. And not only that, they're actually um, reducing um, the volume of people, so they're increasing um, the people that they're needing to support. So um, um, if I showed you pictures, you would feel that my sister lived in squalor because um, her room wasn't accessible to me. So I would visit outside. And then when I saw the state that she was living in care, it was just appalling. But that's meant to be okay. So, um, you know, People are quick to say the bit she had, you know, she's better off now because she did live in that environment. That never makes it okay.
because she should never have been in that environment. Right, so um, in regards to myself, um, I find dealing with the department and having my support needs um, jeopardised more difficult to manage and deal with than not being able to breathe because um, you're dealing with people's judgments and they have no idea of what it is like to live your life. Just like, I don't know what, you know, your life is. So, but people are quick to have believed that um, um, what we need is not necessary. So when Glenda talks about the wheelchair that she needed to stand, <coughs> You know, I can relate to that because now my legs don't straighten. So now for me to sleep, you know, if my leg does arc and spasm, it's actually agony. So, you know, um, with er the right equipment, people's lives can be um, enriched and therefore, um, you know, they won't feel the need for suicide. So I can easily feel suicidal if, um, <coughs> if I don't have a support worker turn up to ventilate me at night because then I have to struggle to breathe. Now, it's not because we don't have that particular equipment to breathe. We just have a support worker it doesn't um, um, appreciate the value of her role or there's not enough people that are um, equipped to do that. So people just send people that in my case don't speak English. So because I struggle sometimes to verbalise, it makes it really exhausting if people don't understand what I'm saying. So can that make me feel suicidal? Absolutely. And because I have dual diagnosis, I have a disability and I have respiratory failure, it's really complex because, but it doesn't need to be complex because we have two departments that don't see eye to eye. So if we had the Department of Health and Department of Disability work together, well then lives would be more likely to be um, less um, stressful and um, therefore it you know reduces those feelings of suicide and um, you know I think passing the laws for suicide it's just well, euthanasia is the same thing in my eyes you know, it's just really dangerous because those emotions can change, you know, but I'm absolutely sure that, um, you know, people would make decisions that they would later regret. And I know that if it wasn't for, you know, having the right people around me at those particular times, that I wouldn't be here today. And I have had family who have wanted to, you know, bop me off as well as themselves, you know. So it does happen, you know. And um, I think people need to be protected, definitely. Thank you.